आपण पाहत आहात संगमेश्वर कॉलेज सोलापूरचं युट्यूब चॅनल
really reflects ourselves. I kindly request the dignitaries and the chief guests to occupy the days. We have with us Honorable Parabji Kadavi, Secretary of Sri Sangameshwar Education Society, today's chief guest and speaker, Dr. Gururavji Karasgi, Principal of Sangameshwar College, Dr. R. V. Desai, sir, Vice Principal of Junior College, Professor Prasad Kunte, sir. Knight College Principal, Dr. Goti, sir, and NC members, Ms. Jyoti Kadadi, ma'am, Sheetal Kadadi, ma'am, Pushparajji Kadadi. Then we have with us Principal of Public School, Mrs. Gayatri Kulkarni, ma'am. It gives me immense pleasure to extend a warm welcome to you all. On behalf of Internal Quality Assurance Cell, IQAC of Samameshwar College, who has clubbed all of us for today's guest lecture. A warm welcome. Welcome you all. We have gathered here for an academic feast and to get enlightened. It's apt today to quote an English poet, John Henry's poem, Lead Kindly Light. Lead kindly light amid the encircling gloom. Lead thou me on, lead thou me on. And Dr. B. M. Srikantaya's Kannada poem, Karunalu Ba Belake. Karunalu Ba Belake, Musuki the Mabbinali, Kai Hididu Nadesenu, Irulu Kattalia Gavi, Mane Duru Kanikarisi, Kai Hididu Nadesenu, Kai Hididu Nadesen, Karunalu Ba Belake, Musuki the Mabbinali. This poem is very close to Dr. Karasgi's heart, who has written a number of books on this title. And today he is going to lead us from darkness towards the light of NEP. Now, I, the highlights of new education policy. It's an interdisciplinary degree. Education that is going to produce people who are good, thoughtful, well-rounded and creative. The NEP with the revolutionary changes like multiple entry and exit, flexibility and multidisciplinary. The policy has been accepted. Implementation is in progress. We need expert guidance and we are here to listen to an expert academician, Dr. Gururaj Karasgi, who will enlighten us about NEP, its structure, its implementation, etc. Now, I request our principal, Dr. R.V. Desai, sir, to deliver welcome address and concept note. Desai, sir. On behalf of IQAC, Sangmeshwar Autonomous College, I heartily welcome motivational speaker, Honorable Dr. Gururaj Karagi, sir, Chairman, Academy for Creative Teaching, Bangalore. I heartily welcome our inspiration, Honorable Sri Dharmaraj Karadi, sir, Secretary, Sri Sangmeshwar Education Society. I extend my warm welcome to management council members, Honorable Jyoti Kaladi Madam, Honorable Sheetal Madam, Honorable Pushkaraj Kaladi Sir, Honorable Tara Madam. And I welcome Professor N.M. Patil from ACT. And all my dear Sangmeshwaryans, we all have gathered today to hear about the NEP, that is National Education Policy 2020. Basically, everybody felt it is like the cat in the pigeons, but not at all. Today we will get a feel of it, how to implement. Basically, the education policy is decided for the progress of the citizens to have a good country. It was first introduced in 1968, then in 1986, and now a reformative in 2020. Many times it is called new, but no, it is a national education policy. Basically, it gives an immense pleasure to go to this reformative measure because its chairman was none other than Dr. Kasturi Rangan, the former ISRO chief. So, we are moving from analog to digital. This is what the NEP suggests. The main objective of NEP 2020 is to promote holistic, experiential, 
discussion based and analysis based learning from teaching it is totally student centric earlier it was 10 plus 2 but it was changed to new pedagogical curricular structure 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 our part of higher education comes after this the highlights of nep 2020 many of us have heard in webinars we have gone through it we have discussed but i would present few highlights that is the nep focuses on reducing the curriculum content instead to make the space for critical thinking and develop individuals with 21st century skills instilled in them this can be achieved by communication presentation discussion debate research analysis and interdisciplinary thinking earlier it was compact and only teaching based the choice based credit system is revised to innovative and flexible competency based credit system with the help of abc there are new facilities for students such as multiple entry multiple exit to bring all the students who were away from the education back to its fold the policy is student centric our institute as we all know is pioneer in implementing the things before they are introduced in the media or by the governments such as skill development courses research cell are already available for students one more point to be emphasized is arts commerce science streams will be merged now with multidisciplinary approach humanities and arts integrated with science technology engineering and mathematics so with this few words i conclude by welcoming you all of you again for this program of guest lecture on nep 2020 thank you thank you sir now to know more about dr gururaj karazi as we he doesn't need any introduction but as a formality i call upon dr shubhangi gaonde ma'am to introduce our chief speaker of today's program dr gururaj karazi thank you madam a very good morning to all of you we are very proud to have a soft hearted strict teacher of principles a richly experienced educator an institution builder and a motivational speaker among us honorable dr gururaj Kar karazgi sir is doctorate in chemistry and has published over 22 research papers in international journals he is life fellow of electrochemical society of india he has published over 100 articles on all aspects of education in national and international journals he was the principal of VVS first grade college for women bangalore india for 16 years he was the director of vvs academic and administrative administrative college founder principal and academic director of the jain international residential school and the founder director of the international academy for creative teaching presently he is the chairman of academy for creative teaching dr karazgi sir He is a member of governing body of the Indian Institute of Advanced Studies, Shimla. He is nominated by Government of India as an independent jury for the National Award of Te to Teachers. He has served as a member of State Resource Group for the implementation of total quality management in the colleges of Karnataka. He has served on the boards of management of a few medical universities. He has served as a member of syndicates of few universities he is he has served as a member of karnataka knowledge commission he is a trustee of lok shikshana trust a leading publishing house that brings out a daily weekly and monthly publications he is well known columnist and has completed 2900 columns his 15 books entitled karuna lubba velake are immensely popular and have seen several editions dr karazgi sir has written many articles on sufi philosophy and has published a book on sufi as of now he has authored 24 books he has
has edited many books including Shikshan Shilpa, a huge collection of articles on education brought out by JSS Mahavidyapit Mysore. Here's to his account, his daily spiritual discourses on a bilingual TV channel, Sri Sankara, with over 500 programs on Das Sahitya and Vachan Sahitya. He has delivered more than 50 series of guest lectures at the Gokli Institute, which are also available in the form of series. He is an outstanding motivational speaker, and his YouTube channel, Knowledge is Spherical, has more than 4 crore views. Chairman Dr. Karansby has his lion's share in building over 85 schools of high quality all over the world through his academy for creative teaching. Now his interests, his interests, his areas of interest include creativity, creative and critical problem solving skills, communication skills, motivation, work ethics and human values. He has designed a complete curriculum in creativity which is being used in different universities. He has traveled and addressed extensively both in the East and the West and has conducted more than 2,000 training programs for educational and corporate organizations. Of course, he is a multi-talented, multi-dimensional, immensely successful and inspiring personality indeed. I cannot resist myself from mentioning my experience here. Frankly speaking, I tried to shortlist his biodata, but couldn't. Every point weighed a lot. Just imagine, for me, just noting the points here were a challenge. What a challenge it would have been to our dear Dr. Karasdi sir to most devotedly and successfully fulfill all the above creativities with great success and satisfaction. I bow down to you, sir, for being such a wonderful creative teacher. Thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much for aptly introducing our guest today. Now I request Kumal Konda, ma'am, to continue the proceeding. We roll down a carpet of welcome and reception by short segment of felicitation of all the dignitaries. I request Honorable Secretary Shri Dharmarajji Kadadi and today's President of the program to do the honors of our today's chief guest and speaker, Dr. Gururajji Karasvi. Sir, a hearty welcome for your valuable presence here. Now, I request our principal, Dr. R. V. Desai, sir, to felicitate today's president of the program, Sri Dharmarajji Kadadi. So, you being our support, you always are there at a step here. Further, I request our principal to felicitate Mr. N. N. Patil, sir. Welcome to you too, sir. Further, I request our Vice Principal, Shri Prasad Kunte sir, to do the honours to all our MC members, Ms. Jyoti Kadadi ma'am, welcome ma'am, please do the honours sir, uh, Ms. Sheetal Kadadi ma'am, Further, to Honorable Prashparadji Kadadi, so please continue with the felicitation. I call upon Honorable Prashparadji Kadadi. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome you all. Thank you, Kunte sir, for the felicitation. It's time up now that we are all impatiently waiting for to hear Dr. Gururaj Karasvi sir. I now humbly request Dr. Gururaj Karasvi sir to deliver his expertise speech on National Education Policy 2020. Dr. Gururaj Karasvi sir. 
some people become cynical and ask, will this NEP also work, sir? Or uh, we go the way the others have gone? I tell them I have to tell a story about it. There was a village and there was a big mount, little hill, a hill there. On the hill top there was a cave and there was a Swami. The news spread that Swami is a Trikaladhyani. That means he knows what happened before, what happens now, what happens beyond. He was an expert. And people started going to him for counselling and taking advice from him. There were four boys in the town. I thought this may be a hoax. You should really examine this Swami. Test whether he's really a Swami or not. Young people are like that. Four of them climbed the hill. As they were entering into the cave, one boy saw a small insect, called cricket, you know, small insect. While flying in there, he just caught it. And went into the cave and sat before the Swami. After 10 minutes, the Swami opened his eyes and saw these four boys and said, Anything I can do for you? The boy said, Swami, I am told that you are a Trikaladhyani, you know everything. I am not asking great things, tell me what is in my hand. What is in my hand? The Swami looked carefully, nothing is seen outside the hand. So what is in the hand must be a small thing, it cannot be a big thing. He said, maybe a small insect in your hand. The boy smiled and said, okay, first is okay. But the question is more important now is, is it alive or dead? The insect in my hand, is it alive or dead? Swami Ji thought for a moment, these boys have come to prove him wrong. Am I right? If he says the insect is alive, he will squeeze it. If he says it is dead, he will allow it to fly. In any case, Swami will be found wrong. What should the Swami do? He thought for a moment and said, whether the insect should live or die is in your hands. Whether the insect should live or die is in your hands. If you want it to live, it will live. If you don't want it to live, it will die. Why I give the stories? Story of NAP is also the same. <laughs> you understand? If you want it to succeed, it will succeed. If you don't want it to succeed, it will not succeed. Ultimately, whatever the policy is made in Delhi or sit anywhere else, are to be implemented by the faculty members only. Am I right? Wonderful machine is produced, but it should be used by somebody else. And the end user does not use it, it becomes a failure. So therefore, NEP becomes successful or otherwise, how you look at it. But I tell you honestly, it was the most wonderful thing that we are waiting to happen. As uh, Dr. Desai mentioned, after 34 years, 1986 was the last one, we waited for 34 years, 2020, to get a new policy like this. I should also tell you in the same way, it is not an original idea. I mentioned about 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4, I will not worry about the 4, because this comes to Gayatri's area. I will not worry about it. But after 4, 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4, after that, is your domain, the college domain. I have had the privilege of talking to some of the best universities in the world. I have been talking, even now, I teach in different universities in the US. I have seen this happening and that is coming into India now. I was telling Kadadi sir in the morning, the pre-primary segment is borrowed completely from England, 100%. They were using ECE earlier, we added a C in between called ECCE. They have been using for 30-40 years and the primary segment where there is a chance of choosing the subject for the students is borrowed from NIOS, National Institute of Open Schooling. And the top one, the college education, university education is borrowed completely from the United States where this multiple entry, multiple exit system has been there for decades. I have been teaching there for so long, I have handled this system there. For a long time they have been using multiple entry, multiple system. But how is used, I will tell explain that a little more carefully today. Uh, this is a futuristic view. I call futuristic view. Definitely, it is totally different from what we have been talking about. How to operate Baba? I am talking about technology and... Should I use this or this? Ah, okay. 
I should use this, is it? That's better. Let me handle one. After 34 years, we have got the system. What is going to happen is, you find quite a few challenging young men and women coming out of the colleges now. The reason is very simple. You had offered some sacred combinations. Am I right? You call the words sacred combinations. PCM, CBZ, HES, HEP. Am I right? You have the same combinations here also? Am I right? Yes or no? Similar combinations. That means, supposing I have to study history, economics, I have to study either sociology or political science. Can I use a subject like physics, history, and accountancy? What nonsense is that? Am I right? Physics belongs to science, history belongs to arts, and commerce, accountancy belongs to commerce. Am I right? Those watertight compartments will go on. In fact, there will be no degree of BA, BSc become. They are of old things now. It was there in India before independence. We had only BA. You remember? We didn't have BSc and we didn't have become at that time. Even Sir C. V. Raman got his physics honors in BA. BA physics honors. There's only BA earlier. We are reinventing the wheel now. Coming back to the same system, we don't differentiation between that. Now there's a chance for students to study what they want to study. We had combinations, rigid combinations, physics, chemistry, mathematics, say for example. I don't want to take mathematics. I won't take physics, chemistry and statistics. No, no, that's not a PCM. That means we wanted the students to study subjects that we gave them, not what they wanted. But the first major thing that is going to happen in AP is Students have the choice of choosing subjects of their choice. Choice. That's something wonderful. Yeah. If I to identify the uniqueness of NAP, these are the four or five areas. Most important, it has broken and destroyed the silos of water type compartments we have. Oh, you are an art student. You are a commerce student. You are a science student. All these silos will grow. The nothing called as BA, BSc become, it will be only BS and MS. As happens in the US now, BS. BS could be history, BS could be computer science, BS could be logic, could be anything. And no common differences now. All watertight compartment like, I have to study physics, I have to study mathematics also. Not necessary. For example, one of the greatest minds of science, Richard Feynman, I am sure physics teachers would certainly know him. I always tell them, if you have not read Feynman lecture series, you are not capable of teaching physics in the class. You should not teach physics in the class. Richard Feynman was the greatest mind that science has ever seen. Do you know his subjects for a graduation course? His subjects in the graduate program were particle physics, American history, western music. Can you believe such combination we can have? But he was a genius of the highest order. In fact, he was one of the greatest physicists. Got Nobel Prize in Physics. He loved drum beating. He went to Brazil and learned drum beating and became a national champion of Brazil. And he was an extraordinary lock opener. You know that? Give him any cupboard, he can open with a hairpin. You can use that. He demonstrated it. He went to Washington DC, went to the President's Archives office. Most confidential office. All the previous President documents are kept there. Confidential documents are kept. One day he went and said, can I go around and see? The curator said, what are you going to see there? Nothing is there. All locks only, cupboards are there, nothing else. Let me go around. He's a Nobel laureate, he can't say, go. He went inside and after half an hour he came back with some bundle of files. And showed him, are they important? He asked the curator. Curator jumped up from his chair three feet. So where did you get them? They are the confidential documents of the present president. How did you get them? From the cupboard, from the cupboard, cupboard was not closed, it was locked. How did you open? With a hairpin? <laughs> if you can open the lock of the President of America with a hairpin, you can imagine the genius of this man. He was called as a lock opener. Why I am saying is human mind is so capable of doing things, simultaneously in particle physics, <laughs> in drum beating and also in lock opening. That is the tendency you have, broken down all silos. Next is more important. Passion as a prime factor in education. Have you not seen students failing in one subject in the combination? They don't like the subject. They don't want to continue the education in that particular subject, but they are forced to study that subject. 
when you are forcing somebody to study a subject their performance is not going to be appropriate now it is not so i have chosen my subjects of choice am i right i have chosen subjects of my choice therefore i am interested in that i learn better the passion becomes more important than compulsion this is more important rooted in indianness i am so happy about it there is so much to study about india and something great about indian systems when the whole world was sleeping in dark india had woken up and given knowledge to the whole world we have a history of 5000 years america has only 300 years therefore we have so much to offer to the world all the while we borrowed it from other worlds oh coming from america is great coming from england is great but there is so much india can offer to the world now higher education is bringing that concept into indianness most important is indianness and the last and most important is holistic it does not bother about what marks you got it also wants to tell you how skilled you are skill is important how good are you in capable in talking communications all these are going to be part of higher education not necessarily only the marks card marks card will not be the only deciding factor what is the vision of this policy it says we make bharat an equitable vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all and that by making india a global knowledge superpower it doesn't look like hot air it is realistic india can become a world beater in science if they want to be the so much of knowledge base is there i have seen this happening everywhere you go to any village in america some fellow who knows some breathing properly in india is become a yoga expert there all running yoga classes there in america indians are doing it. the fellow does not know much he learned a few classes here become the champion there they are looking at india for many things like yoga physical fitness ayurveda they are looking at that now because they have realized the futility of uh, allopathic medicines now every medicine is a chemical that goes into the body and leaves the residue there it, is, it may cure a disease but creates another disease after some time so therefore they have realized the well being is another area that can learn from indian society this is more important both at the school level and the college level the changes are happening first at the school level they destroyed this myth of curricular and co curricular studies am i right we call curricular co curricular extra curricular all these are lost now is only curricular even sports become parts of curriculum music becomes part of curriculum dance becomes part of curriculum nothing is extra curricular am i right there may be a student who is not good in mathematics he may be top class kabaddi player how can you call him a dull fellow he is not dull bismillah khan the genius bharat ratna what was he good at only shehnai nothing else you don't know whether he is good in anything else but one is good enough if you have one area of interest and pursue that you can become a world beater in that this what it says it becomes developed in destroy the mix of curricular extra curricular packages and student right from the children allowed to pursue their interest not what is forced on them i'll come only to higher education now the intention of the government is we should have at least 50% of ger gross enrollment ratio in the colleges to be 50% by 2035 actually in 2018 it is only 26.3% when only 26.3% students were going to higher education they want to increase it to 50% and do you know what is the number of seats to be added on to make it india is a huge country you have to create 3.5 crore new seats in colleges there's a big opportunity for colleges only when you create 3.5 crore seats in higher education you can reach up to 50% of the gr these two are connected if you want more students to come into colleges you must have more colleges or colleges more admissions you understand only both only possibilities one is increase the number of combination colleges or increase the number of admissions in each college that is the only possibility yeah why it is futuristic very important earlier a student joins i have seen this to my college where i was the principal of a women's college many times the girls get married after first year degree or second year degree what happens to them i have pursued ba only up to second year degree i did not continue further she doesn't have anything with her now. 
She neither failed candidate nor a past candidate. Second BA, that's all. Doesn't become BA. But now it is not so. It's a four year program now. If you complete one year and drop out, you get a certificate. You complete two years and come out, you get a diploma. You complete three years, you get a degree. If you complete four years, you get an honors degree. All right? Most beautiful. That means at the end of each year, you get a certificate. You don't get a certificate at the end of three years now, you can get at the end of each unit. And more important is, students who are interested in research, will have to do undergraduate degree of four years I mentioned, NEP decided to discontinue the MPhil degree. This MPhil degree was a limbo, hanging between master degree and PhD degree. I don't know why, what is, what is the advantage of doing MPhil, I don't know. It was there earlier, but now they thought, Perhaps it was meant to keep the professors busy. Am I right? Uh, not many students, you can't take more than five students for PhD. Therefore, do this at least, some activity can be done. But now MPhil is gone. Any PNU is higher concept, it could be futuristic, indigenous and inclusive. That's more important. Inclusive means what? No subject is outside the purview of degree colleges. Every, every subject can be part of this. Supposing you want to have a course on interior design, it can become part of degree program. Curriculum is drawn for every one of them. This is very interesting course. Academic Bank of Credits. Now onwards my friends, we will be not talking of percentage at all. Talking of credits. This is a beautiful system in America which I have seen. Because of which a boy or a girl of 13 years, much forwards. 13 years can complete the master's program. Is it possible in India? Whether intelligent or otherwise. 16 years for SSLC, 18 years for PUC. Am I right? Even if you are a genius, you are an Einstein, you can't complete PUC before 18 years. The age is important. Here it is not so. Complete the credits faster. Supposing, now you are breaking down the subject into credits. If you have 72 hours or 75 hours of teaching per year, it can be broken down into eight credits or seven credits, depending on the university that you have. Once divide the credits, first year degree there are 24 credits, second year 24, third year 24, total 72 credits are there. If a fellow is genius, he can take 50 credits in the first year in clinic. There's no degree of failure there. I complete, I take 50, I may complete 40. Next year I take the remaining 32 and complete it. You can finish the whole degree in two years. You can complete the degree in one year if you want. Exams will be every six months. I can take 50 credits in the first six months. If you are a genius, 50 in second term, you can complete the whole thing in one year if you want. This is called fast track. Fast track. That means you are not assessed by the number of years you spend in the... Even now it is so. 10 plus 2 plus 3, it was earlier, remember? You have to complete degree in three years. Whether you are intelligent or otherwise, three years you have to stay in the college. Why? In fact, you have, have you not seen in your own college, some students do not study the whole year. They study only 10 days before the exam and get first class. What does that mean? It only requires 10 days to complete the degree. You don't require one year for that. I am getting older by one year only to complete one year examination, which can be done in 10 days. So they have done this. I have seen students who have got master's degree at the age of 13 and 14. Geniuses. They can do that. That is the advantage of that. And then there is a bank now credit. Now, I told the example of a girl or a boy who drops out after first year degree. He has got 24 credits to his name. He does not continue education for some time. This is very, very common in the developed world. Higher education is very, very expensive in America. Very expensive. So what the boy does, I join the college. One year I complete, then I drop out. I go for a job. Earn money for the next program. I come back after two years. I may mean, take another one year and again drop out, earn money and go to third year. But your credits are there in your account, like your ATM. You have got money in your bank, you can draw it from anywhere in India. Am I right? Same way, I completed first year, I got 24 credits. My parents get transferred to Indore. I go there. I complete my second year degree there. They will not ask you to start from beginning. It was happening here now. Remember? One student has not gone to college uh, for two, three years. Scheme has changed, pattern has changed, you study all over again. It is not so now. He has got 24, bank is there, it is called DigiLock. 
the credits are there, he can go and say, I have got 24 credits already, take the next 24 credits. That means you can continue your education anywhere in India, at any point of time, your credits will be with you like your ATM money. That's more beautiful. And uh, this allows the students to move from one place to another place. Earlier, remember, you used to have seen in your own college, students used to come down from different places only for the examination. But the student of this university, he can't be taking exam in some other university. It is not so now. Universities are not important. It is going to be that. And then, multiple entry, multiple exit options. As I told you earlier, boy wants to drop out after first year. He can drop out. Come back after two years. Drop out again. Or he can enter at any point of time. The student is allowed to enter at any time, take out at any time because the credits are in store. This is one of the most important concepts of higher education. This is multidisciplinary education. Now, as I told you, the boundaries of history, the uh, art, science, commerce are gone. You can choose subjects of your choice. I tell you now, this is a big challenge for every college and particularly your college. If you want to be number one college in Maharashtra, you must offer combinations which others have not thought of. If you offer the same stereo combinations, why should the students come to you? No reason. Every college is offering PCM, CDZ. Why should they come to your college? I offer, a, in fact, it happened in Bangalore. There is a famous college called Mount Carmel College. Women's college there. Very successful college. The strength started coming down in the college. Degree college is a basic problem. The strength starts coming down after some time. We don't know what to do with that. I suggested, I was a governing council member of that college for the last 25 years. I told him, why don't you change the combinations? Like what? Arts, there were no students. Commerce and science, there some of some students. But arts, there were no students at all. Typically, you offer history, which never changes. History cannot change. Future can change. But you teach the same old information. And the students are tight bored. Unless you make it exciting in the class. And then social sciences, sociology, political science. These are the typical courses. Students started, number numbers started dwindling. I said, why don't you start a new combination? Like of the English, psychology and journalism. It was the first college to offer. Can you believe now? Mount Carmel College gets 900 this year. 900 applications for 60 seats. 60 seats. Admissions not possible there. It became a very high profile college. The reason is psychology. Said, why I gave the idea is very simple. There are 400 TV channels, as I know, there may be more. Am I right? Who is giving the material for them? Fellows acting there is different. Who is giving words into their mouth? Somebody is writing the dialogues, somebody preparing the script, somebody designing the lighting arrangement and all that. They are part of journalism. There are so many papers now, you have to write journals. Am I right? So, journalism. For journalism, you require language. Am I right? Good English gives you a good journalistic opportunity. And you should be a good psychologist to do that. What to write and what not to write. <laughs> most of us know what to write, but most of us do not know what not to write. Get into confusion. So these three combinations have become very effective. You offer combinations of that kind. Different combinations. For example, chemistry, environmental study. You know, connect chemistry and environmental study. Another course. And then put computer science along with that. Combinations of different kind will give you a leadership in the whole institute, university at all. If at all we have to become leaders in the university now, it is our intelligence to think of appropriate combinations. How smart you are in deciding combinations. No limit now. You can say, this is my combination, I offer this combination. Children will come. Make attractive combinations now. You can make the combinations of that if you want. For example, business studies along with accountancy and commerce are very standard. Can you not business studies can be brought into other areas? In arts department you can think of? For example, student wants to be an archives. Archives is a big place now. Can you teach archives as a subject along with history? Therefore, I leave it to you because there are at least 200 subjects listed in the uh, website of uh, UGC now. They have announced. You can choose the subjects and do it. Once you see degree of three years or four years, and academic bank of credit I mentioned, this is going to be useful. How smart you are going to be in choosing the combination, 
is your success formula now now the colleges are going to be huge the idea of a college is 500 strength and 600 strength are gone now ugc is i mean the uh, nep is recommending the college strength should be about 3000 students can you believe that the 3000 students at colleges higher education institutions they say offer as many combinations as you want depending on your infrastructure facility and your faculty that's more important you can do that and most in universities will be different now three kinds of universities will come one will be research intensive universities second will be teaching intensive universities and autonomous degree granting colleges you are the last one you are in the autonomous college now you have a chance of becoming an independent university yourself it could be a teaching university or a research university if the emphasis is more on teaching you can become a teaching university if you want to put more emphasis on research you can be a research university and then this is very important to me they are going to start a few universities i'm sure it's going to happen in maharashtra as well in karnataka they already started work research universities is called meru multidisciplinary education and research universities this is something fascinating like medicine mbbs degree that we have along with another subject which is related to that for example commerce people never thought of commerce and medical together today medical is only commerce <laughs> is it not right is it not right uh, if you see during corona who got the maximum benefit in the world <laughs> hospitals pharmacies and a friend of mine who manufactures dolo 650 <laughs> he made 950 crores surana you know that my friend 950 crores in only dolo one dollar tablet and dolo became a life sustainer for all of us check the packet of everyone in the airport you may not find money there you will definitely find code of dolo 660 650 capsule during corona everybody carried it with him so therefore i was thinking why can't you combine this medical along with pharmacy and accountants and business management believe me doctors are not running the hospitals now mbas are running the hospital mba builds the infrastructure and say you come there as a pediatrician you come as a psychologist you come as a gynecologist they select people and run the show so hospital management is a big one so therefore medical and management together that's what the combinations are coming now multidisciplinary research is going to happen a friend of mine who was a vice chancellor of karnataka university as my junior now he is in charge of a dna research center is a meru meru university that means a university which is also doing many things along with medicine teaching accountancy and logic is also doing research on viruses dna studies so therefore these are going to be research university there is also going to be national research foundation now they are creating a foundation national research foundation i would request you to make use of it you are such brilliant people you should do research in your own college you are grading in nac you know very well you have gone through the third cycle already and got a grade one way i am happy one way i am not happy with the institution of this standing you should not think of anything less than a plus plus with this kind when can you get a plus a to a plus plus is not easy getting a is one stage up good congratulations but a to a plus plus is not going to be easy what is the difference between that you got iqac you know i have been part of iqac for many universities the question is this a to a plus plus depends on your research ability and your mentoring ability most important is research how innovative is the research most of us do research only for our phd and nothing else most of us once you finish your phd research is close you get three increments fine that's not the purpose of phd phd is a learning license please remember it's not the end of education it allows you to do research on your own you don't have to take students for phd can you want publish papers on relevant topics in society unless you publish papers you can't go beyond a you have to go to a plus plus you have got to have focus on research this is most important to us and research foundation is going to help you a lot 
UGC had that pros uh, uh, possibility. You can do the junior, junior projects, senior projects. Uh, you can take projects and get money from the UGC. But now this NRF is going to fund in a big way. If you got a project with you, they will finance you. Real big money is coming. Believe me, Mr. Modi, I should congratulate him in that. He has kept a huge amount of money for research foundation. Can you believe he has identified a few universities which are given 100 crore per university? If you are doing research, please do that. This one area where you can really become building capacities of people and this. Involve the students also in research. You have got graduate program, you have got postgraduate program here. Postgraduate degree is there. Okay, fine. Then research is easy. You can take the students and do research. That will give you a big fillip. This is another one. I tell you, fund competitive peer-reviewed grant proposals of all types across all disciplines. You want to do a project in social science, you can do that. You can do a project in mathematics, you can do it. Project in chemistry. Simple example I'll give you. When I was the principal of the college, uh, we did a small thing. Three colleges collaborated. My college and Mount Carmel College and another NNPRB college, all three women's colleges. There was a news in the paper uh, that quality of water provided by the corporation is poor. Drinking water is poor quality. I said, I am a chemist myself. We took the samples. I had 2,000 students in my college. I gave each one a pearl pet bottle, sterilized bottle, get water from your house and one from the neighboring house. I had 4,000 samples. Same thing was done by other colleges also. Totally we collected 8,000 samples and did the analysis. We did the chemical analysis, somebody did the bacterial analysis, somebody did the uh, soil con salt content analysis. They did different analysis and we made a paper. Published a paper and we found that 54% of the water supplied by the corporation was bad. 54% was bad. I had the audacity and guts to go and give this report to the commissioner of the Bangalore City Corporation, an IAS officer. IAS officer like that only. You can't change it. I went and told him, this is the quality of water you have given us. He said, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Who told you to analyze? I said, I'm drinking water, therefore I should analyze. <laughs> and then I told him, I'm a chemist. I've done research, uh, high quality research. I can do that. He said, no, we don't accept it. We do not recognize the agency. I said, thank you very much. I went to the paper and announced it. Called for a press conference. Next day, the headline started screaming, the quality of water is bad, 54% bad. And these three colleges have done and they quoted my name also. I have some name in Bangalore. So, it got wide publicity. Corporation was very angry with me. Angry or otherwise. They have to get it tested now. Now that I told 50%, 54% is bad. They sent the water to Hyderabad, the approved research laboratory, approved by the government. And after a week, report came from there and I was found wrong. My report was wrong. Because we said 54% is bad, Hyderabad said 56% is bad. We <laughs> 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 said, I should have accepted your report only. It's better. Do you know what happened after that? This Department of Science and Technology found that we are doing our own. We didn't know ask Paisa from Science and Depa uh, Technology Department. They sanctioned one lakh rupees each of these colleges as a special grant for doing some social research. I'm talking of one lakh rupees in 1984-85. It's a big money today. Is it not right? More than thinking a student got certificate for doing quality research. This will give you a immediate uh, visibility in the society. Am I right? Others, I am teaching physics, chemistry, biology, somebody is teaching physics, chemistry, biology. Our students go back after the college like soldiers of a lost war. <laughs> See the children going back home. Are they excited when they go back home or are they excited coming back? So therefore the question is, if I can make the classroom environment research exciting, I can be really good. Seed grow, they give you seed money for doing research, develop it and facilitate research. And you should use it very well. And you can add, the uh, NRF becomes a liaison between you and another top class university elsewhere. You make a proposal, say that I do this part, I don't know where others can be doing. Where, I don't know where the other uh, follow-up research can be done. NRF will help you. Okay, there is an institute in Hyderabad, you can collaborate with that. Together you can do a great job. Something fascinating, I tell you. 
they are not only giving you seed money, also giving you links of what others are doing in other areas also. You can connect with that. Collaborative research is going to be good. More important is, allow breakthroughs to be optimally brought into policy and implementation. You do some research and research is successful. They give you publicity for it. They give publicity and say, this college has done this work. Can you try that? They send it to all colleges in the country. So therefore, your college gets high visibility there. And finally, recognize outstanding research and progress. They give awards also for good individual research and collective research. Something good that you wanted it to happen. Small research you can easily do. I tell you, in colleges you can do very simple. Your chemistry lab is good enough, physics lab is good enough to do small research. You can do that and contribute to the national progress. Ah, this is going to be, as the Professor Desai mentioned, online education. We had uh, two years online education. Corona. I should be grateful to all the teachers, sir. I offer my pranams to them. December 2019, nobody had heard the name of Zoom. <laughs> nobody had heard the name. But come April, everybody was using Zoom, Zoom and taking classes on that. They started knowing how to police the people also. Hey, switch on the mobile. You switch on. Go on. You come here. All kinds of things we learnt in four months. Even if Modi wanted us, all of us to learn technology, would not have learned so early. Corona did it in four months. You know, we learnt uh, the use of technology so effectively. Now, now they say, now that you are used to online education now, earlier we found it difficult. Today you can communicate online. So therefore, can you continue online education now? Yes. What you should do is called a hybrid form. Teach something in the college. Most of us, I hope you agree with me, most of you feel the time is not adequate to complete the syllabus. Yes or no? Yeah, so much content. In 70 hours, how can we do it? It is designed for that only. Time will not be adequate if you are teaching and also giving notes. Right? We give notes also, right? Yes or no? Yes. Ah, I know. <laughs> we have got silver jubilee notes. Right? <laughs> Is there anybody teaching for the first time here? Anybody teaching in the college for the first time? First year experience? Yeah. First time you are teaching? First year. Uh, when you are appointed as a lecturer and tomorrow was your first class, how did you feel the previous day evening? That was, you read so much, am I right? You read so much, this book, that book, this guy, that reference book and made your notes. And still, as you entered the class, there were butterflies in the stomach. <laughs> right? And every student like, like, looked like a born enemy. And if any boy smiled there, you thought something is wrong with me. It happened to all of us. You prepared so much and got over in 40 minutes. You don't know what would the remaining 20 minutes. It happened to all of us. All right? Next year, what happens? There is tension. Suddenly, principal says, go to the class and that class is free. Oh, sir, I am not prepared, sir. You go through your notes, read once again, and then go to the class. Am I right? After 10 years, no preparation. Go to the class. Sometimes the teachers ask student only, what was I doing in the last class? <laughs> Am I right? Because he's a secretary, no? You should keep track of what he's doing. And you say you're doing this, oh, you'll continue from there. Students say, what a genius, what a genius. <laughs> Nothing genius there, he's doing the same thing for the last 10 years. There's a very old joke, very old joke. It seems when the teacher was dictating the notes, one boy was not writing down the notes. Teacher got angry for two reasons. One is the fellow is missing notes. How dare he miss my notes? He said, get up. Why are you not writing down the notes? The boy stood up and said, sir, I have the notes with me, sir. You have the notes? Who gave you the notes? The boy said, my father was also a student, sir. <laughs> Nothing has changed. For such people, NEP is not useful at all. NEP is not useful. The reason is, I don't want to read. That is a tragedy. Believe me, honestly, I am saying this statement. Don't call me. Most of us have stopped reading. It is a tragedy. Very sad. Any people force you to read, otherwise you can't do research. The reason is I am living on the past glory. 
I have not read any book of my subject in the last two years. In fact, Linus Pauling, the man who got Nobel Prize twice in his lifetime, I had a chance of being with him in MIT for some time. Great man. When he came to India, he said, I am sorry about Indian teachers. He said, I met hundreds of them. They came to take my autograph. I asked one question to all of them. Can you give me the titles of three books that you read last year in your subject? I am not asking analysis and critical assessment. <coughs> names of three books that you read last year in your subject. Nobody could give me three names. That means they have stopped reading. Is it not right? And that is a tragedy. And higher education, we can't afford to do that. We can't afford to do that. This is one. Online class, we can start doing it. Online class content. You can teach in the class. Assignments online. It's a hybrid mode. You understand what I'm trying to say? You save so much time. Teach the concept and give the problems to solve at home. Come on, answer it. Send it back to me. Send an email. In England, you can't go to teacher for finding difficulties. Sir, can I come and ask you? No, go. Send a mail. You send a mail, say, I'm available between 3.15 and 3.30. Come and meet me. You go there at that time, specifically ask your problems, you get solved and come back. They manage their time so well. And also, most important is connected online. Teaching and online should go together. Ah, digital I mentioned. In fact, you have all material ready. So much of material ready content. Online is available. And they also say all your videos should be ready. Suppose you are running a program, complete all the videos in sequential form should be available at all. So student can access it anytime. Suppose one day student doesn't come to your class for some reason, genuine reason. Uh, any problem? You got a class? Okay. If uh, some reason the student does not come to the class, what will happen to him? You are able to see your serials also after four days. Television serials, which never end. You know that? The serials never end, but you have, oh, I missed my serial last week. You can go back and check and see. If somebody can see the serial which happened one week back, they should be able to see your class also online. Is it not right? Videos are ready and they have, that's called digital education there. Technology in education is okay. I have mentioned about it. There's going to be NETF, National Educational Technology Forum, which will help you. If I do not know how to do it, contact them online. They'll tell you how to do it. Right from your YouTube, you know. My mixer does not start. Nobody goes to mechanic now. Go to YouTube. How to repair your mixi? They'll tell you. Similarly, they have got this technology forum. They give you guidance about how to use technology effectively for your teaching. This is next one. Indian languages. I'm happy. They are developing on every Indian language. They are putting Pali, Prakrit, and Persian. They're going to do that. They're going to be national institutes of languages. That's going to help in developing languages. Ah, this professional education, most important now. So far, we have divided knowledge into different segments. Science college, arts college, commerce college, agriculture university, medical university. Unitary subjects became universities now. Am I right? One medical college became an university. One engineering college became an university. Institute of technology, institute of management. They will all go now. They will call IIT IIMs. You know now, IIT is starting classes in history and logic. You got to be multidisciplinary. They have to teach basic sciences, basic social sciences also as part of IIT and IIM. All of them will have multidisciplinary studies now. They will not be exclusively meant for that. Even agriculture university, yesterday the vice chancellor of Panchayat Raj University spoke to me. I am going there next week. Do you know what the subject he is doing now? Panchayat Raj government he is doing use of technology in agriculture. Is required, very badly required. So therefore, how it becomes multidimensional, all technical universities, standalone institutions, will all become multidisciplinary. They cannot be teaching only one particular set of subjects. Internationalization. This is what we worry. It is an advantage. Now they have listed 100 universities all over the world, which can come and run classes in India. It is going to be a threat and advantage also. Imagine Oxford comes and starts a centre in Solapur. What will happen? Many people would have to go to Oxford by the name of it. Cambridge comes. 100 universities are listed already. Uh, top 100 universities all over the world will 
to operate in India. They may operate in India directly or by online. There are many universities are offering already now. So many universities are offering online, including uh, Stanford University is giving you online degrees now. So many universities have come and uh, the time has come for all of us to see either improve or perish. Only two options we have. Struggle hard, become better or perish. Therefore, we have to compete with the best in the world now. It is going to be indigenous, using as much as possible Indian knowledge, Indian systems that we encouraged. Financial support. If there are students who can't afford education, many children don't afford education at higher level. There are going to be agencies which give you a lot of money. National scholarship portal is created. And I'm happy about NEP because it has thought of all things, not just one part of it. You can do that, apply scholarship and special scholarships for SC, ST, OBCs and SCDGs. And private institutions will be encouraged to offer larger number of free ships and scholarships to students. They will be encouraged. Foundations will be there. They, connect, they have already made a list of 200 foundations which can help higher education, including Ratan Tata Foundation and all that. You make an application for that and make the right proposal, those foundations will give money for those students studying in your college. So therefore, the purpose is this. No child who wants to learn should be deprived of education only for the uh, lack of money. Money should not deprive a student from learning. And regulations now, only one, UGC was the only body earlier, is a misnomer, is a wrong name it had, University Grants Commission, only giving money, nothing else. But now is replaced by Higher Education Commission of India, HECI. That will cover all universities, including medical engineering, excepting two, medical and legal, excepting those two, all other branches will be covered by HECI. They will cover everything. And uh, as a faceless intervention through technology, we will have powers to check every educational institution. You have got knack now. In fact, the other day I was joking to Mr. Sharma. And Dr. Sharma is the director of NAC, National Assessment Accreditation Council. I told him, you are evaluating all colleges, but you lost your A. So what do you mean by that? NAAC, am I right? Now it is reframed into National Assessment Center. That means NAAC, one A is gone. I told him, you lost one A. Instead of doing something for others. But that is going to be important now. They want to interfere, invest, find out how the colleges are doing. And earlier there was no penalty for the colleges. You understand? They are giving you grade. C grade, B grade, whatever they were giving. But now they are going to penalize the colleges if they are not following the regulations and standards. Something new. That public and... Another important thing is, I am happy about it. Private and public institutions will be assessed by the same yardstick. Earlier, government, co government colleges, yeah, no, they're like that only, they're like that. Facilities are not there, government colleges. It's not so now. The same yardstick with which, which are the private colleges, they are going to assess the government colleges. It's going to do good to government colleges, facilities will become better. I mentioned all that I had to mention, because I had time was one hour, and I completely completed one hour now. So, any questions, suggestions, corrections, I stand for it. I know, very difficult to get the first question and very difficult to stop the last question. <laughs> yes, you can ask me. Who gain uh, all the credits of graduation in the first year itself. So are they eligible for the competitive examinations? No. For example, everything has an appropriate level. To become a particular thing, you should have completed second PUC. To become somebody, you have to have SSLC. Similarly, now they are creating positions now. I asked them, ask this question when it was being done. Okay, if they complete BA, there is a job. You can become a clerk or you can become, appear for IAS examinations and all that. What will the first year BA student do? He is neither BA nor PUC. Is in between. Now they are creating these cadres now. You understand what I am trying to say? Diploma is not equated to degree. You understand? BE is not same as diploma. There are particular jobs for diploma, particular jobs for degree, particular jobs for PUC, 
particular jobs for SSLC. Now they are making jobs for first degree, second degree and third degree also. They are defining that. Once they have, they can go to that level. So they are making provisions of different levels so that others, what is the use of certificate when there are no jobs at all? But they are creating levels there. For example, you want to be a clerk. There is a minimum SSLC. Or to be an attender, you require SSLC. But a BA can also apply to clerk attender position. Higher level. But past 10 standard pass cannot apply for a degree uh, job. For if they can apply for a clerical job. But now they are making it grade appropriate jobs. That means certificate, diploma and degree and honours. And honours is an advantage. If you do four year honours, your uh, MSc will be one year only. Master degree will be one year, not two years. So the jobs are being created sir, for that. Yes sir. Pardon? Would there be any changes? Eligibility? No, no. Teacher's eligibility is not there. Now you can say qualification will be master degree as usual. But there is also a move now. It is already done. In private, you know, they are not getting good teachers. They are called as, uh, what call Emeritus professors. Professor of eminence. Professor of eminence. Supposing I am, uh, you have got a person here. He is a very famous doctor. He is very good in analyzing uh, viruses and all that. But he doesn't have a PhD. But I want to teach this uh, immunology in my college. He is a very specialist man. But he doesn't have the qualification to fit this. But you can still invite him as a professor of eminence. He can come and teach. That is also allowed now. That means people from specialized fields can come and teach without the necessary qualifications. But for regular teachers, you require qualifications. That will also perhaps change as the days go on. Yes, sir. Question. Junior college, chi mula, baravi pass hota. Ani tumi credits sa ullek kela. Tadi credits sa tani sukti cha kala udhi dethli. Tadi BA, BCom, BSc la upyogi padta kya? I should tell you something about PUC, which I did not touch because it's only a degree college. But PUC college also? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. PUC colleges are in serious trouble. Independent PUC colleges cannot exist. There is no existence of independent PUC colleges. They become part of the schools only. They become part of secondary education. So therefore, there is no credit for them. They have to pass choosing subjects of their choice. He can choose subjects instead of PCMB. He can choose physics, chemistry. Then he can choose logic and history. He can do that take subjects of your choice, but PUC by itself will not be there at all. And then as degrees that do not have art, science and commerce, any PUC student can apply any subject. They have to take two subjects, in degree you know that, they have to take two subjects, major and minor, and you can have electives also. You can choose electives of any of your choice, beautiful combination of them. In fact, I have seen people taking mathematics and uh, physics as two subjects, they are taking other electives like chemistry and botany. Electives, open electives. But PUC students, no. Uh, they are part of the school only. They don't have credits. Yes, sir. What are the scheme of evaluation? We are implementing choice based credit system. That time, variety of subjects, different types of subjects. Ultimately, if you want to evaluate these subjects, then will you please? Yeah. Uh, the evaluation is going to be different, not like the mark system that we have. It has to be graded evaluation itself, evaluating by grades only. Now, you please see the fault in the system now. I value a paper, I allot 92 marks for a student out of 100. Believe me, you remove the marks marked by the teacher, give the same paper to the same teacher after three days, he may give 93, 94. Subjective evaluation. Or another teacher values the same paper, now we call it as differentiated valuation of plus or minus 5%. 5 marks will be different. That means, imagine a student got 95 and 92, we call 95 first ranker, 92 second ranker. Is it not right? We are making the difference by the marks. One mark makes a difference. First rank and second rank difference is only one mark. But actually the papers are given at a later date, maybe the second floor would have been the first floor.
Now I want to avoid all that. They are called bands. 90 to 100 percent. Anyone belong to that area will be A grade. 75 to 90 percent will be B grade and so on. It will be valued in grades only. That means they all are in the same bracket. Not much to choose between them. They are almost the same. So valuation will be in grades only, not in terms of marks. Yes, ma'am. One second, I'll give you the mic so everybody can hear the question. Now, the students have got a chance to select their own subject, the subject they, uh, in which they are interested. And they'll complete their certificate course. But after that, isn't it necessary for them that because nowadays so many students, they are doing other courses also for the sake of to get a job. So, the, would you please tell me about it? Let Change the subject after that? Yes, no, means they are completing their certificate course in it. But even though they want a job, particular job, and they want a more, uh, they want to do a courses. Nowadays this thing is there. But what will, uh, will be there after this? Very good question. I should have mentioned it. Very nice. Supposing I have taken some subject in uh, chemistry and one subject in botany and another in logic, say, a hypothetically given example. Then I find that there is so much demand for computer science. Jobs are available in computer science programming. Am I right? I don't have a degree. What do I do now? I go to the college and take only those credits. You understand what I am saying? We said that I finished my first year degree, chemistry, biology and logic, I finished. I find that I think I made a wrong choice. I should have taken computer science. What I will do is, I take the, uh, the uh, computer science units credits of first year, second year, third year also. Drop out logic there. You can do that. Ultimately, what is in your balance is more important. They see, oh, you have got one credit of chemistry, one credit of botany, six credits of computer science. How many credits you have in computer science will give you jobs? For example, in American university, they don't study any subject seriously. They want to do pursue in this field. For example, insurance is a very promising thing in US. They take insurance course. I take credits of insurance only. I take all 72 credits of insurance only. You are most preferred there. So depending on the jobs available, I choose my great credits. You can do that. Like for example, in bank I go, I draw the money. I can open my account in any bank, no? I can open my account in any bank. I have got accounts in four banks. I don't like these two banks. I don't make any deposits there. They are there. But I am making account deposits in this bank. Similarly, I have studied chemistry, botany. But I want to study account, computer science more. I take more credits of this and provide to the employer, I got all the credits in computer science, he gets a job. That is the beauty. I didn't tell the dangers of this. I only told nice about anything. I should tell you the dangers of anything. Dangers is dangerous for the teachers. Very dangerous. In a sense, you will not have a definite stopping pattern in a college. There is a demand for chemistry, we admit students, more chemistry students come. And after three years there is no demand for chemistry. Everybody goes to accountancy. What will happen to chemistry teachers? Six of them in the college, they can't be there. There is no workload. And then after some time accountancy workload falls, English becomes more. That means you can't be sure of, like you know, in markets it happens, you know. There is a great demand for tomatoes, tomatoes are not there, 75 rupees kg. Next day so many tomato, tomato comes there, 10 rupees kg. You understand? Now the colleges will also be driven by the market needs. Market needs. There is a big danger. That means you have to become smarter. That is the chance in US, what they do you know? A doctorate in botany does his MBA and start teaching management. <laughs> My student who did her MSc botany in Bangalore University, she has a doctorate in botany. I met her recently, she said, what are you doing? I am teaching management. How? I said, yes, botany was not in demand here. So I did an MBA course. I did an MBA course, did my course and I am teaching MBA now. What is the problem? She said, I forgot my botany now. <laughs> I am doing that So this is going to happen. That means based on the demand, I must equip myself. If I don't equip myself, I become redundant very fast. I become redundant very fast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir. Thank you, sir.
uh, foreign inver cities are coming in our country. So, what will be the future for our own universities? Yes, yes. And next, previously, government was investing only one or two percent in the education. Yes. But in new policy, what will be the investment of the government? Yeah, I'll answer. Good, good question. Now, Lankans came to India to play against India. They are beaten blue. Am I right? New Zealanders have come now. They already lost the match and perhaps lose other two also. Because they find it difficult to play in India. Indian pitches are different. When our boys go there, the ball flies all over. <laughs> Green turf. We have a wicket, which is like a paddy field. Throw the ball, it turns. Ball may not, baller may not turn. The ball turns for the pitch itself. So they, they suppose don't know where the ball is coming. Same thing with education also. When they come to India, to understand India, they require 10 years. <laughs> we have an advantage. We know India. So therefore, unless you are very smart, very smart in planning things, because you know India, what India needs. And remember, why are they coming here? Not for the love of India. 140 crores, sir. That is 140 crores. It's a big market. It is three times the size of America. Where will they find people? They have to market their courses. Am I right? They are coming here only with the marketing agenda, not to love us. So therefore, if we love our India better, I must design new courses now. It is a chance for us. Don't take it as a challenge. Take it as an opportunity. If they are coming, why not we? Angels are not going to teach in those universities. Humans are, human beings are going to teach there also. We are also human beings. Can we not teach better than them? And our children understand our English better than American English. Am I right? They require one year to understand their slang of I'm going to do it. <laughs> Our students understand better. Therefore, I must make my content better. I make my teaching methodology different and I become very relevant. In fact, I have been teaching in Harvard and Harvard Business School also. They accept me very easily because my English is acceptable to them. Am I? Supposing I'm Spanish, use my nasal accent. Uh, I don't understand. I find it difficult in the US when uh, Spanish people speak, talk to me. Uh, I, I said, come again, come again. Three, four times I have to ask them. But Indian students like your English. And secondly, you have an advantage, you know Marathi also. And most of the children who are studying in Maharashtra, uh, most of them, I am generalizing. They are very good in Marathi but not good in English. Sometimes you have to teach English in Marathi. <laughs> in Marathi. Agree? It happens to you. That. In fact, it happened in Karnataka, a British girl had come to our office. She, they come to our office. Uh, she was very particular, good teacher in England. Very particular. Don't use other language to teach English. English should be taught in English only. I said, try. Good, very good. I took her to a village in Bagatur, Bargadi. And uh, the girl went to the class and she taught, drew a picture of a roof. Say roof. She told all the children. They all said, say roof. No, 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 no. Say roof. All children said, say roof. <laughs> Just struggling hard to make them say roof. Finally, our teacher said, hey, Ucha, roof or not? Roof on the roof. Why is he saying roof? Because she told in Canada, say roof only. Roof. Why I am saying is, you require the advantage of a mother tongue. You have that advantage. Remember, the foreign universities do not have these advantages. They have these advantages. And I tell you what will happen is, be careful, huh? Karadi sir should be more careful. Because all foreign universities start pinching your best teachers. That is one thing. They have got a lot of money. They say, who are the good teachers at Anvashur College? Two good teachers, come. How much are you getting? One lakh? I'll give you two lakhs, come. This could possibly happen. Because you know, you know how to teach in Marathi and also English. They do not know. They will come, Pakka East India Company. <laughs> East India Company. You know, right? They know how to tell. How many people came from East India? 280 people. They conquered the whole country. Who are the remaining people other than 280? Our own people only. Is it not right? So therefore, that is a possibility. We should be guarded against it. Now we have an advantage. As I told you, Indian pitches. We know better. When you go to New Zealand, story is different. But they are coming to India. 
so therefore is our home ground we shall teach better methodology better use different subjects appropriate subjects and we shall be as good as good as them in marketing our programs will be successful it's not a threat it is an opportunity for all of us to tighten our belts and become better yes ma'am so just now you said that uh, nep will try to uh, revitalize the languages like ardha magadi uh, pali yes. sanskrit etc but if you look at the content of uh, uh, let's take the example of ardha magadi and pali uh, if you look, look at the knowledge or the content which is there in these languages uh, don't you think that it is slightly outdated so how is the revival of these languages going to help india as a nation and the indians yeah very good question in fact the entire jain philosophy is in pali most of us know about mahavir jain but we don't much about jain philosophy as such perhaps you should know it was the most pragmatic religion most pragmatic religion in the world and some of the swamis there sanyasis have written on atomic theory much before anyone in america thought of or england thought of or western world thought of atom i have read a book on theory of atomism in jainism all these are in pali in fact there is an institute in vaishali in bihar where i visited it is an exclusive institute of only in pali sir the librarian took me there such a huge library including the manuscripts and the the palm leaves uh, scripts are also there he showed me plenty of them and they have got about 10 15 rooms to stay he said sir we are welcoming anybody can stay here we arrange everything for you do research and go but nobody is coming sir the reason is that knowledge is there if supposing a science teacher goes with the pali knowledge i have an advantage i have studied pali dr gp rajaratnam taught me pali script and i translated quite a few of the jataka stories of buddha in kannada i tried to 548 stories i translated in kannada marvelous marvelous if some of the science teachers can go and sit there with a the pali scholar they can write huge papers on science only that is the knowledge available so now they are making it available to everybody and they are making the syllabus also for colleges in pali ardha magadi and uh, uh, prakrit in fact most of the buddhism was in prakrit therefore the knowledge is available plenty but we have not tapped it we have locked it. in fact there is one a great scholar in kannada called as masti ventesha ingar the gnanapeetha award winner you would always say in every house there is a cupboard and in the locker there is 100 crore cash but this man is going to everybody and begging for 10 rupees can you give me 10 rupees are why are you begging man you got 100 crores in the cupboard he says i know there is money in the cupboard but i don't have the key the key is in his own pocket he doesn't know how to take the key and open the money he is too with knowledge so much knowledge is available in india exclusive libraries are available if only government is helping us now you want to do research on that this library is available now uh, not only take the horse to water but make him drink also also they are doing it telling you the sources of information and these are available do you want translation of that i can tell you ma'am i have got in my computer at least about 1000 pages of pali script translated in english by somebody else for your benefit uh, knowledge is available if supposing i am a language teacher i am teaching marathi i am teaching english i can also start teaching pali they are giving you uh, online classes of learning pali you can learn and teach students so that is the way they develop languages thank you thank you sir thank you. and one more question yes, last sir. question yes uh, nep also talks about uh, uh, cluster university yes yes uh, that is uh, uh, it's my interpretation may be wrong also Uh, some of the smaller universities in the adjacent areas in like in villages etc they will be closed and there will be one central college or university maybe at a district place if that happens then won't it deprive the village students uh, from education so i think that nep at one side is talking about inclusion at another side the result will be deprivation of poor classes villagers etc from uh, education so isn't there a discrepancy and finally this will lead to some kind of uh, class system again the old class system will be created that fear is there in my mind 
So yeah. what is your opinion? I'll answer? give you an answer, ma'am. The idea of cluster schools is very dominant in NEP. They are thinking of cluster universities also. Not exactly cluster universities, cluster around an university. Supposing there is an university, supposing Sun Maheshwar becomes an university, there will be 10, 15 colleges tagged on to you. The advantage is this like college has a good library. This college has a beautiful playground. And this laboratory, this college has a wonderful laboratory. Why should you replicate everything everywhere? Again, build another laboratory there, another library there, another playground there is difficult in cities. So therefore, students of this college can go to laboratories there, sports there, and for learning other things and other college. What is good in every college is made use of. In fact, it is not the question of denying the students. It is giving an opportunity for a student who does not exist in that college, in another college connected with that. For example, in Bangalore, we have got a cluster university now, Maharani's cluster university. There is a home science college, arts science college, commerce college, all put together. The advantage now is, science college has a beautiful laboratory. laboratory. This doesn't have. Students are prepared. And one question will come. I know when we have to share something, we are really careful. Two institutions of the same management also find it difficult to share. Am I right? Sir, they came and destroyed the laboratory, sir. That college, sir. And they said, we did not do. It was vanished before I came. And it goes on complaining. What they have done is beautiful. The, the lab in charge does not belong to any college. You understand what I am saying? He is for that laboratory. He is accountable. He is to maintain his diary. This college students came, did the practicals and went back. He is held responsible for all that. Then there is no complaint at all. It is only like a hotel. I go to the hotel and stay there. There is somebody to manage. Similarly, now they are having cluster universities. People can go to other universities, other centers to learn more. In fact, it becomes more inclusive rather than exclusive. Man. Because I don't have a facility in my college. What do I do now? Uh, yes, sir. But uh, physical distance also matters a lot. Uh, they have mentioned distance of maximum of 10 kilometers around. Within 10 kilometers. Okay, then it's all right. It's implemented, sir. In cluster university? Yes, sir. Actually, this has not come into place yet, sir. One university in Bangalore has started cluster universities. Their advantage is because they are immediate neighborhood across the road. Home science, other side of the road, arts, commerce are in one place and they have university. They are sharing together. It's a women's college. All four are women's colleges. But when you become big and as Madam said, distance is a matter, 50 kilometers. Then for laboratory, I can't go all the way. So they are making 10 kilometers as the radius within which all universities should exist. Yes, ma'am. Hello, sir. I just wanted to know the eligibility criteria for the exams like JE and NET. Yeah, good. Very good. Very good. Very good. The PSC students will have the same JE and NET examination for some more time. Another four or five years, the same process will continue. They will not change it. Because the whole setup has been built over a period of time now. So much of research has gone on in building it. And NET is introduced only recently. Therefore, they will not change it now. But the question is this. PUC students also can opt their subjects of their choice in the new system now. Then they have to prepare for those subjects that appear. It may so happen, I'll tell you in a hypothetical example. A student has taken history, economics, sociology and political science for PUC, but wants to appear for NEET. Can he appear or not? Logically can't, but theoretically yes. Reason is I study PUC in uh, history, economics in my college, but outside I have taken coaching for Biology and uh, Mathematics and Science are up here. Like for example, you remember 10th standard, there is a provision for direct uh, appearing for the examination after 10th standard, external examination. If you are 16 year old, you don't have to go to any school, you can directly appear for 10th standard board examination. You don't have to pass 10th standard at all, you are still there. In India it is there, it is called external examination. If you are 16 years of age, you can directly appear for 10th standard. They will assess you on what you know. Am I right? What you studied earlier, no problem. You know it? Okay. Same thing happens on it also. I am an interested man. I study biology externally really well. Come thoroughly prepared. Basically, my subjects are different. If I am qualified in the examination, qualifying examination, I go to need. So therefore, a situation will come 
where what you study in the PUC has no relevance to what you examination you take. Yes. Sir? Diploma is good, sir. In fact, the government is encouraging diploma. In fact, they're good, sir. And now the AGP is giving importance to diploma courses. They say called skill-based education. They can directly go to jobs. They are giving importance to diplomas. Abhi jo system hai, jo system hai ek class mein 120 itne vidyarthi rehte hain. Ye bahut badi samasya hai ki ek adhyapak kam se kam 120 vidyarthi ko ek samay handle karta hai. Aane wali is policy mein class ki strength kya hai? It's a difficult question. Very difficult to answer, I tell you, sir. First question you should ask: Will we have students in the class? <laughs> then worry about the higher number. The first question you should ask is: Will we have students in our class? For example, go to Bits Pelani here in India. You know what is done? The first one week is called as the open house. First one week, students can go around, sit in everybody's class. You are like a model. Attend your class. Suppose I am taking physics. There are four people teaching physics. I go to attend all class and I choose my teacher. You understand? Very subject. I, I want this person to teach physics. Me. This man biology. This man chemistry. I choose that. And he prepares his individual timetable. My timetable depends on whom I have chosen. My class starts from morning 7.30 to evening 9 o'clock. That means I go and attend my 7.30, 8.30 class, come back to library or go back to hostel. Again at 12.30 to 1.30 I go there, teach and come back. That means your timetable decides on the teachers you have chosen. And see the other effect of it. Every two years the management will review how many students you have attracted. If nobody has chosen you, you have no business to be in the college. Very simple, very simple. That means no student wants to come to your class. Therefore, now the attraction will be how many students you attract in the class. Uh, like, you know, in the Bangalore Mysore Road, uh, there are so many dhabas on the way. <laughs> Very crude example, of course. Dhabas on the way. They make one person stand on the roadside. I, 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 I. They're attracting people to the hotels. I don't think it will happen to colleges that badly, <laughs> that badly. But remember, unless you make attractive courses, students will not come to you. Your number in the class may be 15, other class may be 100 also. Depends how you do. For example, my own example I'll tell you. I've been teaching in IIM Kolkata for the last two years I've not taught. Before that I taught for 10 years in IIM Kolkata. A paper uh, as to teach. And the director told me these numbers are falling come to 30. If it goes below 25, I can't run the section. Can you do something about it? I said, I'll do it. I planned and changed the whole curriculum and went there in the teaching. Now we have 165 students in the class. It's a circular hall called Gandhi Hall and children sit on the steps also. I am boys, remember. Uh, they have got horns on their head. Uh, they sit on the stairs and now the chairman is telling me, sir, the problem is I can't have more than 170. I have to have two batches. I said, I can't come and teach two batches. The choice is yours. You make it exciting, people will come. Sir, why will uh, honeybees go to a artificial flower? Honeybees will not go to artificial flower. They go to natural flower. The only question is, I'm not worried, bothered about honeybees. I'm worried about how do I become a naturally attractive flower. If I become an attractive flower, people will. Strength is not a problem. Strength is not a problem. If that double number, you can say I have 60 only, 120 I come, I take two sections, make two different sessions. We can do that. It's a beautiful scheme, sir. I tell you, any if you look at it in two different ways. One is, oh, all complications, you know. <laughs> because human mind is so difficult to change. We resist changes. But take it as an opportunity, a lovely chance. I never had so far. 20 years I taught. I never had this chance. I'll make it nice now. It becomes successful. Yes, sir. Last question, huh? Because I have to go to school education also. Yeah. I have to do one more ADP in school education. Uh, sir, I want to ask you some question. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, this is all good. Uh, uh, it is very good for the students and societies also. But as our college in autonomy, 
we have an exam section in our college also. But how to implement this in the uh, exam section? Can you give any tips or suggestions for this one? Yes, very good, sir. Very good, very good question. In fact, I am the chairman of an autonomous college in Bangalore, Maharani Lakshmi M&A College. It is an autonomous college. Autonomous college have an advantage and a disadvantage. Advantage is you can set your own curriculum, you can, not curriculum, curriculum decided by the university only and type of examination you can conduct, award marks you can do it. But the tragedy is you don't get the visibility of a regular college. You know, even if your student in your college gets 10 marks more than the first rank holder in the university, her name will not come in the paper. You understand what I am saying? University topper, the girl's photograph comes there and gold medal she gets. But your student has got 10 marks more than that first ranker, but she will not become, because it is autonomous college, I don't see your own results. We have to give our own gold medals. But getting gold medal in university is different from getting in an autonomous college. But autonomous college becomes meaningful in NEP, because you can offer courses of your choice. University colleges cannot do it. You can design your own course, get it approved by the board of studies. Now there is a nuisance now. Is neither autonomous nor un, uh, university now. I am sure you are facing that problem. They call autonomy. What autonomy you have? You want to appoint a teacher, you have to go to the university, get the approval. And to curriculum, you should go to the university, get the approval. Dates of examination, you have to go and take their approval. It's pseudo autonomy. But in terms of NEP, real autonomy will come to you. You can design your own curriculum. This program I want to conduct. In fact, in one college, in King's College, London, I created a curriculum and taught. The Patil knows. Course on creativity. Tell me, sir, which university in India has that course? I have been teaching this course for several years. None of the Indian universities took it. But American universities gobbled it. Even Harvard Business School has taken it. I am teaching there. Course on creativity. One year program on creativity. Full program. Complete content, methodology, everything I have. If they use it, it becomes something fascinating then autonomy is meaningful only when you introduce courses of that attraction. Buffalo State University in New York is the only university in the world which gives you bachelor's, master's and doctoral degree in creativity. It's the number one university in the world. Why? Because they thought something different. So therefore, autonomy becomes, at present, it is namesake autonomy. Dr. Desai, you agree with me? Namesake autonomy. Simply say autonomous college. We are a branch a little higher than regular colleges. But a time will come you become completely autonomous. NEP idea is that most colleges will be away from affiliation system now. Autonomous colleges and become deemed universities you can do. Then curriculum is yours, but one risk is also there. Remember, when you become totally independent, you can't point your finger at somebody. All fingers will come to you only. Design is yours, exam is yours, result is yours, and uh, accolades or criticism is of yourself. Lovely chance. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. As we know that Mr. Gururaj Tarasgi is an inspiration to academia today. We often discuss his academic credentials in the department with my senior colleagues. As NEP stresses upon research and you also believe in it. And we feel that your inspirational career should be taken for research. A study or a research can be done on Dr. Gururaj Karasgi. And these might be the following topics. Inspirational speeches of Dr. Gururaj Karasgi. Dr. Gururaj Karasgi, a teacher of teachers. Dr. Gururaj Karasgi as an academician. Dr. Karasgi and his oratory skill. Impact of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam on Dr. Karasgi. Literary insights in scientist Dr. Karasgi. Dr. Karasgi, a humanist. Dr. Karasgi, a study on Allam Prabhu and Vachana literature, impact of Dara Bendre on Dr. Karasgi, etc. So, Dr. Karasgi is a multidisciplinary scholar. Thank you, sir, for your enlightenment. I now request Secretary Dharmaraj Kadadi, sir, for his presidential remark. Okay, sir. sir, as uh, by your honors, we are really proud that you have given a very deep dive, though with uh, briefings, right? And for any event to accomplish and attain its purpose and fruition, 
It requires the involvement and evolvement of every hand, idea, action, support. And it's always apt to take into account this protractor's revolvement by thanksgiving. And in line with this, I call upon our Vice Principal, Professor Prasad Kunte, sir, for a vote of thanks. अच्छा कार्यक्रम से प्रमुख मार्गदर्शक डॉक्टर गुरुराज जी करसदी अपने संस्थे से सचिव श्री धर्मराज जी काड़ादी सर्व प्राचार्य व्यवस्थापक सदस्य उपस्थित सर्व प्राध्यापक सर्वान नमस्कार अपन दीड तास ज्या भार अवस्थे हो तो तीस भार अवस्था अपनी दिवसभर आवी अस प्रत्येका मनात वाटल वर्षा की सुरुआत है नुकता संक्रांति का सण जला इतक गोर भाषण आम ऐसा मिलाल है पं जो प्रत्येक वेला अपने सगैंक अपने जवाबदारी की जाव कर जवाबदारी की जाव अपन नक्की सगेज स्वीकारू हि तो अपना अपन खरी देव यण अपन प्रत्येक जन नैचरल फ्लॉवर आहोत फिर सुगंध अपन सी आता दयावा मुल अपने कड़े अपने विषयाला आप बधुन ठेवावी हि आता सभी जवाबदारी अपनी है सर खूब आभारी है कारण आम नावत गुरुराज है तो आज आम या एन पी ची जे का संगित सगे अपने गुरु है अस मटल अपने संस्थेतर्फे आभार धन्यवाद अपन सगे जन अस संगू कि सर पर एक अपन या अपले विचार ऐका उपयोग आम्मी सगेज खूब मनापासन तैयार आहो अपने संस्थे से सचिव वे वे का अपने इधे प्रत्येक वेला ये प्रत्येक वेला अपने मार्गदर्शन करता बदल ही आभार प्राचार्य इतक सुंदर आयोजन के लिए आई क्यू एस सीतर्फे आभार इधे सर्व व्यवस्थापकीय सदस्य आए पुष्कराज जी का आदरणीय तारा मैडम है आदरणीय ज्योति काड़ादी मैडम है आदरणीय शीतल मैडम है पाटिल सर है तो बरबर आप सर्वज मोटा संख्य में इत उपस्थित रहो टेक्निकल जे साहय आम सर्व शिक्षक ने के लिए इतक सूत्र सु सुंदर सूत्रसंचालन के बदल आभार मानतो आ अध्यक्ष परवानगी हा सुंदर कार्यक्रम संपला से जाहिर करते नमस्कार